I'm not alive. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Kanika Shanae, a.k.a. The Pretty Hustler. And tonight, we're going to be doing a special TN Hip Hop interview with LVM Tonio. He should be coming on any minute now, but I hope everybody's having a great day. I'm having an amazing weekend. Spill it is going on tour. What the fuck else? <laughs> what the fuck else is going on? Like, I'm having an amazing weekend. To say the least. My curls are still intact. That's a great thing. Because it takes a long time. I'm smelling fake flowers. It's awesome. LV Antonio just came on. Tap, tap, tap me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. How you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Good, 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 good. Is it, are those braids? I don't remember you having braids in the video or nothing. Nah, I, I always had, I always had braids, but like every month I change it up. I change it up, I'm not going to lie. Every month you change it up? Are you wearing yeah. headphones right now? What happened? Are you wearing headphones right now? Not at all. Because I can't hear you that well. Like, I can hear you, but it's like, painted. Let me see if it's me. No? Mm. Okay. We're going to work with the aesthetics here. Yeah. Um... So, before we get started, I'll let you introduce yourself to everybody, let everybody know what you do, what you repping. I know you're repping the Bronx, so you gotta rep the strong. You gotta like say it to everything. You gotta go hard. Yeah, all right. So, look, my name is LVM Tony. For those of you that don't know, I'm the top bandit for me. My music is very simple. I make all types of music. Very simple. I'm from the Bronx, gangster. And yeah, that's it. New York for me. If you repping the bandits, drop a Raccoon in the comments. They know. They see already. Raccoons is in the comments. Gangster. Yeah, you gotta tell me about this raccoon thing. Because I, I don't see that anywhere in the bio. What does that mean exactly? All right, so the raccoon basically, like, it's like, it's the bandit. Like, when you think about a bandit, you think of a raccoon. Like, you think of, like, all right, so, for example, right, a raccoon goes and takes trash, it takes people's jewelry, you know, stuff like that. But like a raccoon's like a scavenger. Okay. He, he. I like that. Whatever you gotta do. Like that's what it means. You feel I me? I like that. Yeah. So you call yourself the bandit. Yeah, I, I'm one of the bandits. I'm not gonna lie, I'm one of the bandits. The other bandit is his bandits. name Regular J. Yeah, there's many bandits so out there. So let's talk about LVM, Love versus Money. First of all, why did you decide to name your group LVM? Um, so back in like 20, I want to say 2018, we used to be called something else. We used to be called Lo Non. So we ended up doing a, um a whole name change. We wanted to just shift everything and we realized that you know as a unsigned artist and you know nobody knows us there's a decision you have to make when you're in this music stuff it's either you're doing this for the love of it or you're doing it for the money so you know we created like a controversy we was like i bet love versus money like let's see like let's see what this takes us let's see what we're really doing this for you feel me so so far what are you doing it for Right now, I'm doing it for, <laughs> I'm still figuring that out. Because I love music, don't get me wrong, but I love money. Like, you know, I love I love the fans. I love people, you know, turning up to my music. But at the end of the day, if I'm not getting paid out of it, you know, it kind of, it puts a damper on everything. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It does yeah. because it makes you feel like you're, you're being taken advantage of for your craft. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But you know what? At the end of the day, if you think about it as a way of just building value to yourself, to your brand, then yeah. you'll, you won't be looking for the money so much. You'll be looking more at the love aspect of it. Yeah. I, I, when I went on tour, um, the love was real. I'm not going to lie. Because this is states that don't know me at all. And they all showed love. So 
though that feeling of having like you know other states like clap for me and like cheer me on and be like y'all want to make music with you and see that's love right there you don't really get that in new york i'm not gonna lie you don't get that in new york a lot gangster that's true that's very true it's very true yeah. how was the tour life when you were touring what safety did you visit <laughs> i'm not gonna lie tour was lit and i ain't even like i wasn't even on tour for that long because of covid but tour was lit like when i was when, when i went to virginia we did everything like you see like see someone just said it. you got love in the va for sure like va was like I don't know. I felt like a second home for some reason. Like everyone loved me. Like no matter what they claimed, they could have been blood, crip, all that, and they just show respect just off of just music. Like that's just real love right there. Yeah. So being on tour, we did everything. You know, we was smoking, we was drinking everywhere. The sprinting van was lit. The car rides was lit. Like everywhere. And I and the thing is, I ain't know about like state laws and stuff. You feel me? I ain't know I could get locked up for smoking on the street. But like in yeah. VA, you could get locked up for smoking I, on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, and I, I, I ain't know that until like after somebody told me. Someone was like, "Yo, you crazy? You just smoking and walking in the mall and stuff." I'm like, I'm on tour right now. I, don't, I, don't, I really don't care. Like, oh, yeah. you was living your best life. Okay. I definitely was. If I got locked up, then it, it is what it is. At, at the end of the day, like, you feel me? Oh, okay. You a gangster? Yeah. Okay. Nah, I ain't gonna say I'm a gangster. I'm not. I'm, I'm for me. I'm just a free spirit. I love for me. I, I was like, okay, you're free. I, I so how was the music? Right what was the music scene like out in VA though? VA, um, I, don't, I ain't gonna lie, I got respect for them. They, they, they sound very, of course, they're in the south, but it's very mixed. Like, I heard a lot of young boy influences from them. I heard a lot of different, like, just different, like Atlanta influences. Like, they had their own. They have their own sound, I'm not gonna lie. And I definitely have songs with some VA artists, so that, when that drops, that, that'll drop soon. But they, they all nice, I'm not gonna lie. And they, they spit pain. Like, a lot of their music is really trench music, like, because it's different than New York. You know, they really, they really doing it to people out there. Like, they really robbing, going in your cribs and, feel me, all that. You're not really doing that like that in New York, but, you feel me? So some of their lyrics, they was very, like, explicit, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Okay. I actually love VA. That's like a, a second home to me as well. You know, right. it's a little bit too country for me because I'm kind of the city girl. You know, yeah. I want to be able to go to the mall and not have to drive there near to Maryland. But like, yeah. <laughs> I still love VA though. So it's good that everybody, a lot of artists are coming and saying that VA and like Atlanta, out of town, show you the most love. How do you feel mm -hmm. about that? Like, your own city don't really show you as much respect that um, you I would agree. get to another state. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, New York right now, like, we're so competitive. Like, you would never hear, like, you would never hear Richmond is competing with Norfolk. Like, you don't hear that. But you'll hear that the Bronx is, compete, is competing with Brooklyn. You feel me? You'll hear Harlem is competing with the Bronx. So... Like, I respect all other states. Like, all southern states, I fuck with all the time. Like, New York, we so, we so, we egotistic, that's, you feel me? Like, we're so egotistical. Everyone got egos. That's why I don't really, like, I don't even like doing features out here. I'm not going to lie. I'd rather go to the south and do features because niggas in the oh. south, they know how to work. Yeah. They know how to work. So what what is the process like when you go and you ask somebody, that's out here in New York to do a feature with you. Are they more standoffish because they want to, or are they more like, nah, I gotta do this feature so like I can body this dude on the on the song? Um, in New York, I so at first when it came to features, nobody wanted to do features with me because I used to be. I'm not gonna lie, my music was back then. Back then was whack. I'm not gonna lie. I had bad music. Uh, at least you keep it a buck. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I like that. My music was whack. <laughs> But nobody, nobody took the chance to be like, all right, let me help this kid grow. You feel me? So now, now that I'm, like, I'm becoming lit, like, now that they see me that I was on tour, I was on Power 105, like, now they seeing certain stuff, people want to start flocking, trying to get features. And that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen at all. Now there's a price. Like, now there's definitely a price. 2021, there's a price. People got to pay for features. Unless you gang, you got to pay for features. That's it. Simple. <laughs> Unless you gang. I hear nice shit. 
I hear that shit. The price been going up. I hear that. <laughs> and it sucks that people weren't receptive to your music, or at least not receptive, but willing to help you find your sound. Um, mm -hmm. Realistically, sometimes with as an artist, um, it's not necessarily that they don't want to really help you. It's kind of something that you kind of have to find out on your own. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't really have to be that way. They should at least point you to the right direction. Like, yo, I got this man that do the engineering. He makes real good. Let me hand you over to him. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, I got this producer that got really good beats that'll fix your voice. Let me hand you to him. I got this manager. Like, that's really how it's, how it's supposed to be. Do you feel like your team right now really comes together and supports each other and helps you and the rest of your um, group get to a point of, I guess, of success, of reaching your goals? Yeah, so my team, like, I'm not going to lie, we probably, like, one of the most diverse teams right now in New York City. There's nobody that's doing it like us. So, I mean, everybody on my team has their own sound, and nobody sounds like at all. Nobody sounds like. Not one of us is on the – all of us is drill rappers or all of us are singers. Nah, we do it all. So, we first got this started because, just like you said, nobody pointed us to the right direction. We legit found our engineer – off of like some girl, like off of some girl's music, and then we hit up that engineer. That's been our engineer for like two years now, gangster. And he's pushed us like he's Dr. Dre. He's like legit, legit made us into like what we are today. Cause like we was put through boot camp. We was like we would have to like record a verse over and over and over and over until we got it right, gangster. And no one is real, really willing to do that nowadays. But people laugh at the whole making the band shit. But mm -hmm. that shit was very, it was the smartest thing that Diddy has ever done. Because mm -hmm. he knew what it takes to be an artist because he's an artist himself. Mm -hmm. And he put those guys through serious, rigorous boot camp training to get to a space where now they're all individually, they can go solo yeah. and do what they want to do. You know? Yeah. Boot camp things of artist development, because that's what they call it now. Yeah. But it's really, it's, it's, it's the same, it's boot camp, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. So, um, artist development is really important for artists because they go into this thing and start, everything starts off as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Even with me, everything started off as a hobby, you know? I still um, had passion and put towards, put towards actual funds towards my passion, but mm -hmm. realistically, it was a hobby at first. It was like, yo, I'm going to start writing, I'm going to start doing interviews, and then we're going to see where it goes from there. And then it actually became something more lucrative. So in the beginning, you're like, yo, it's a hobby. You got to tell, yo, this is a, are you making money? It's a hobby right now. You know what's crazy? you making bread, it's a hobby. You know what's crazy? The way LVM started, like, it, for us, it wasn't even a hobby. It was like, just something that kept us together. Like, we used to freestyle every single day, I promise you. Randomly, like, 2017, when we first started making music, all right, how do I say this? I felt like I was, like, I don't know what basketball team, but, like, I feel like I picked the pieces properly. Like, I made sure I picked every single member, and I knew, like, every member's, like, talent. Like, for example, LVM Dreams here, you feel me? LVM Dreams probably one of the most nastiest rappers with wordplay. Gangster. I'll say that right now. In New York City, gangster. And then LVMJ, probably one of the best pop artists right now. Gangster. And I knew what I was doing. So the crazy thing is, is that with me and when we first started doing all this, I was probably the wackest member in the group. I promise you. I promise you. You and be keeping it a buck. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I was definitely the wackest rapper in the group. Regular J. Regular J's probably the nicest rapper in the group. Like, as far as balls, nicest rapper. Nicest rapper. And that's my best friend. Like, that's been bro since, like, diapers. You feel me? So, when I learned, like, everything just by watching them. I promise you. Just by watching them. I give credit. I give credit where it's due. And gang definitely is showing out. Like, so... This ain't, so this you handpicked every member of the group yourself. Mm -hmm. You handpicked every member of the group yourself. Yes. But it was based off of not just the fact that they're 
you know, good, they're talented, mm -hmm. but off of, the, off of loyalty as, as well, off yeah. of the vibe and the energy that y'all have. Mm -hmm. Like, That's Elvia like Dream, I think him and Regular J were, like, the first two to do music, like, before me and LVMJ started doing music. So I used to want to be like a boom bap rapper. I'm not gonna lie. Like I wanted to be like on some. Joke and that's a good. Rap. What you mean? What's, what is wrong with boom bap? There, there's nothing wrong. That's what I grew up on. I, I promise you. I wish I could. I wish I could make that music every day, gangster. But you know that don't sell as much. It don't sell. You know. So, and I like all types of music regardless. So I'm gonna make. Oh, I'll make a boom bap track tomorrow. Like, come on. Right. You feel me? Right. So, that's so yeah. unfortunate that like. The music that, because that's real hardcore hip hop, mm -hmm. boom bap. Um, the music that that kind of founded and and you grew up on is not what's gonna make you the money. Mm -hmm. Like realistically, I like drill music because it's a good turn up and party joint. <laughs> you know what you I'm listen saying? to drill music because <laughs> it's a good because it's a good turn up. You know, yeah. like when I'm in the car and that shit is bumping, people yeah. are like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, and you get the, and the, you got the dances that go with it and shit like that. It's like to me, okay, drill music to me is like the equivalent to like kid and play music. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. It's party music. Mm -hmm. It's something that you can sit up there and you can make a dance to. Mm -hmm. And people going to bop to that. They're going to really move to that. Boom bap is something where you got, that's some real life lesson shit that you got to yeah. listen to. And that's the thing, like, I think when I first started making music, since this was like 2017, 2016, roughly, during the time, that's when mumble rap, like mumble rap was like being hated on. So I, would, I didn't want to be labeled as a mumble rapper because everybody at the time was just shitting on people that was making music on SoundCloud. As I kept making music, I started realizing that SoundCloud is just a platform. Like, for people to call somebody a SoundCloud rapper is, like, you're just telling the person what he makes music on. So I learned that, like, I don't just have to make boom bap rap. Like, I can make legit everything. But don't worry. Don't worry. Conscious music? I, psh, don't worry. I got some. You coming out with some conscious I got, shit? I got some. I got some. Yeah, I love definitely. it. I love it. I love it. But your background is really Guyanese and, and more Caribbean. So, yeah. You know, are we gonna be able to hear some Guyanese Caribbean like soca soul music? Type of music? Soon, soon. I, I definitely um this year, I definitely want to get a vocal coach. Once I get a vocal coach, I definitely want to take a trip down to Guyana. You know, because you gotta to be able to make that type of music, you gotta do you gotta do the Drake thing. You gotta, you gotta, gotta travel, and then once you travel, like you are gonna start feeling the culture more, and then you gonna come back and it's gonna all hit. Like I definitely want to make soca music. Like that's a fact. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm looking forward to hearing some. Wait, so what are I don't you, really are you? get too many artists on my platform that show or showcase like Caribbean music. Mm -hmm. And I'm Caribbean. So when I'm listening to a lot of rap music and, you know, I'm around my Caribbean side of my family, they're like, this all you listen to? <laughs> Wait, so you, what you are you? Are you, you Jamaican? No soca, no, no calypso. No, like, what are you doing? I'm mm -hmm. Asian and Dominican. Oh, so, okay. the Calypso and the Soca is like, you know, that's that's yeah. hand in hand. They yeah. listen to this hardcore rap music and they're like, yo, <laughs> My dad, my dad was like very big on like, like old school hip hop. But my mom, like I grew up in a, um, like when I live with my mom, I grew up in like a Guyanese Jamaican household. You feel me? So, you know, me and my siblings, we got different pops. But, you know, they pops in Jamaican, so, like, all that culture just, like, influxuated. Like, it just all kept, I don't know. Like, I could listen to, like, a lot of, like, old reggae music, and I could just chill. I could just smoke, you feel me, chill by myself and just listen to all that type of music and stuff. But my dad was really, like, old school hip-hop, like, Biggie. Like, if I put on if I put on some Chief Keef, he's turning it off. He's turning it off. Yeah. You feel me? He's like, yo, what is this? And he's pressing like something else. And he's like, no, this is real hip hop. Playing Mob Deep and shit, like, shit like that. Yes, yeah. yes. Mob Deep shit, yes. Yeah. I can hear from him in I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I think out of every, like, I got, I think, that was like 20, 2019. I think I posted a status and I said, Big L is better than Tupac. 
and mad people like screenshot that shit and was like coming at me and shit. But I was like, he is you said better. Big than L is better than Tupac. As a rapper, yeah. As a rapper, yes. As an artist, no. Lyrically, are you talking about lyrically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. As a rapper, okay. yeah. Okay. I, I okay. separate, I separate I think rappers agree. and I separate artists. Like Tupac's an artist. Yes. But Big L was like, because they have a track together, and nobody's telling me Big L ain't body Tupac on that. Right. Like, come on. You feel me? <laughs> I agree. So maybe it's because you should have specified yourself. You should have said Big L is better than Tupac lyrically. I said as a rapper. Like, come on. People should know what that is. They don't know what that is. Because, okay, so see, this is the thing, right? Okay. People that aren't in the music industry, they don't know the difference between, or they don't, they don't have the same mind as us. Yeah. When I'm listening to artists, I'd be like, oh, yo, he's a dope artist. You know, a performance artist. He's a dope, just general artist. I love mm -hmm. the package that he put together for his brand, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm just thinking lyrically. Like, lyrically, I can easily be like, I see you put up your mask. <laughs> 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 nah, I didn't think she was gonna peep that. Gangster. Oh my god! <laughs> I just follow my own fit. I don't have the I don't have the Rona. It's a lie. No, I'm crying. Right now. Nah, that was funny. <laughs> Stop that! I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that she's weak right now. <laughs> no, this you know, I can't even finish the interview. I'm weak. Did you just... <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else in your comments is seeing it. But the way you put up the mask, you was like... <laughs> only, yeah. only me, because I know when people try to throw shade me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I, I was hoping you was gonna peep it, but <laughs> I. <laughs> I love it. This just made it a million times fun. Yeah. This is great. This is great. So, like I was saying, I don't have the Rona. I swallow ice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, people don't have the mind that we have. They don't think about music the way that we think about music. Mm -hmm. So when I'm you know, listening to artist music, I'm like, oh, yo, know, he's a dope artist. Or like looking at the whole package and whole. But I'm, or, or, um, you know, he's lyrical. Mm -hmm. He has bars. I can really hear, you know, the metaphors and everything like that. But not everybody thinks like that. So you gotta break it down for them, like, it's slow. Like, yo, he's a dope artist. Meaning, he's good for branding and marketing. He's, he's good on that. Mm -hmm. But lyrically, it's like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Not a lot of people even like Big L. Not a lot of people even, yeah, you're right. Not even a lot of people know about him, too. Because they never really listen to his, they never really listen or care for his music because they're not thinking lyrically. They're thinking artistry-wise, what really pops. And mm -hmm. that is too pop. You know what I'm saying? So that's why they was like, oh, nah, you bug me. Don't worry about it. They don't know what they're talking about. They'll be all right. We know what we're talking about. They'll be all yeah, right. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. But getting back to your dad, right? Mm hmm So you were saying that he had a lot of, like, basic influence on your rap career. Because before, you weren't really crazy about rap. I mean, you always had a love for it. Mm -hmm. But he was more like, yo, this is real hip hop. Like, kind of showing you the ropes of how the culture works. So how um, else? Yeah. No, nah, I was gonna say that like um I think like my dad, like even my mom, like shout out to Mama Bandit, like you know, the type of music that when I first started making music, I went back in time to learn the history of hip hop before I even started fully rapping. Like me and gang would like legit watch NWA documentaries. Like we learned the business side of everything to like benefit our catalog. So that we know that, all right, cool, we can make this type of music. We can make gangster music. We can make, you know, lyrical music. We can make pop music. We can do all that. 
but we have to make sure we know the history of everything so that it makes sense. So that, you feel me? Like, there's a lot of people that just try to jump into stuff and they don't even know what they, like, they don't know what they're doing. So, you know, having that diverse catalog and, like, my pops sitting down, like, yo, listen to this. Here, I'll put you onto this playlist and stuff. Or my mom giving me, like, her R&B playlist. Like, she used to, for me, when my mom cleans, like, she has a whole playlist that, you know, is annoying. I'm not going to lie. Like, when you wake up Sunday morning, you don't want to hear that Sunday morning. Like, but. You don't want to hear the R&B? You don't want to hear baby face in the morning? I mean, now I can. Now I definitely can, like, you know, since I'm more mature. But, like, when you're 17. I'm saying, now you can't, because, like, you know, that's what's going to get the ladies to wake up. Yeah. The baby face playing in the morning is what's going to get the shorties to wake up. That, that's the alarm like my mom doing that that's the because the thing is that like all right, when you're a teenager you don't want to you don't want to wake up early in the morning and clean you look my brother and sister could attest to this and my mom starts playing some old r&b music we already know we got to get up brush our teeth start cleaning you feel me like but looking back at it like that that definitely was a big impact. Cause now I listen to that music, I'm like, wow, like some of the lyrics they were saying, like my mom was singing her heart out. I promise you, she was singing her heart out. Like, <laughs> I like my mother too. My mother yeah. too. I tell people all the time, like even though my platform may seem um, hip hop based, mm -hmm. I'm the my first love was R and B. Mm -hmm. I listened to Maxwell and Case yeah. and. Faith Evans and Jill Scott, and that's what I grew up on. Which, when I started to see those artists mixed with the hip hop flair, that's how I started liking hip hop, really. Mm -hmm. Because before I didn't really, do, I was like, yeah, I just like every now and then, you know? Like, um, I was big on with Big Pun. I've always been a Nas fan. That's my number one artist. Really? Um, yes, I was big with Big Pun. I was big. That was my favorite artist. It's still you know, my is. mom knew Big Pun. Huh? I said my mom knew Big Pun. Your mom knew Big Pun? Gangsta. I love. I'm sure. Listen, I'm not even gonna hold you. I'm sure my mom knew Big Pun too. <laughs> my mom been everywhere in New York. You know, our mom used to really get down with these rappers yeah. that we now they were all, all in your position at one point. Mm-hmm. So they all used to like hang out and party with these rappers that we now look at icons. Mm -hmm. And we never would have thought, like my aunt was telling me the other day, she was like, yeah, I used to hang out, you know, over there in Queensbridge where Nas was and everything. I'm like. That's crazy, right? <laughs> I'm like, did you tell me you used to hang out with Nas? <laughs> that's like, crazy. Did you just sneak that in there? Like, yo, yeah, that's my old something now. I'm like, you know. That kind of stuff is what makes me continuously fall in love with hip hop because yeah. I hear my cousins and my aunt and my uncles be like, "Yo, not I used to hang out with them back in the day." Mhm. Mm That's true. Yeah. Can't even count. That's Can't a little bit. Count. What R and B artist would you do a remix of their song for? You said what three artists? What R and B artists would you do a remix artists. of their song? Um. Mm. Does that have to be old R and B? It could be recent R and B. Uh, Brent Fires. Um, what's that song? I think he he just dropped it. I forgot what it's called, but a Brent Fires. Song. I said Brent Fires. Never heard. Okay. You never listen to Brent Fires? Oh my God! You gotta listen to some Brent Fires. You got it. Yeah. It's like. Brent Fires, look, I had to take off my hat. Like, you gotta understand, like, okay, like, <laughs> you know I mean? yes, nah, but, the baby lost. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nah, but Brent Fires, um, gangster, like, his music is like, you see how Janae Aiko is like, she really like toxic, like her music is really toxic for women. Brett Fire is really toxic for me. I'm gonna not let you. You're not gonna slide with that one because her music is not toxic for women. Come on, miss. Her, that's what I'm saying. Okay, because 
Janae Aiko, um, Jasmine Sullivan, Tink, the um, I might throw some Milka in there. Mm -hmm. I really don't listen to her that much, but enough to be like, they have their own little bubble. I would put them in a category of like, they're the generations. Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, mm -hmm. um, Lauren Hill. Because I love for real, for real, Lauren, Jeanette Aiko is Lauren Hill. Nobody can tell me this. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, true. You know, she don't rap like Lauren Hill does, but as far as music and the way that the flow goes, same person. Mm -hmm. Same person. But so, I'm not going to lie, but someone woke up, she, she toxic too, though. She looks like she toxic. I feel like I feel like she toxic. You must not say these women are toxic. I mean, nah, nah. <laughs> Brent Fires, Brent Fires is a toxic nigga, gangster. Yeah, that's why I like his music. I'm I don't know if I can listen to it then. I don't need no more toxic men in my life. You gonna you gonna like the music because it's so little. His sound is like so like I don't know. It's like it's it's magical, yo. Like you gonna be like, wow, he really said that. He really said that, like. He's mad descriptive, but you know how it is, man. You know how it is. Right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we not toxic. Right, we not toxic. That's right. Toxic. Lies. No, Lie we not tell. toxic. You know, things is different. Talk about these competitions that you won. Oh, <laughs> so my first, um, I think it was my first Grind and Star showcase. Shout out to Grind and Star. Um, my first performance ever over there was October 20, I want to say October 2019. Um, I ended up winning a um, Grinding Star radio. Um, he put me on his first um, radio. And after that, I ended up going to, this was on tour too. So there was a show in Connecticut and the winner got a um, free studio session in Connecticut. Me and regular Jay took over the show. Um, we won that. That was like, it was lit. I'm not gonna lie, we had the crowd um moshing and stuff. Like they was it was a mosh pit. Um let's see. And then recently in December, I definitely won Power 105. Yeah. It was nice. a Power 105 competition. And nice. How was that experience? Did you get everybody to talk tune in? Like, yo, my I think we playing on 105. With the Power 105 thing, definitely people tuned in because I saw my numbers, like my streams. It started going up. Like people were shazamming um Bandit Talk because that was a song that was played. So like in like a night fifty five people shazam the song. So you know, that was that was some. And the competition like was lit, I'm not gonna lie. Like I had a lot of like I had a lot of fun. Cause it wasn't only just me that that was competing. It was me, um, regular Jay was competing, L V M J was competing, L V M Dream. We competed against each other, but at the same time we were still showing support. As long as one of us won, it was a it was a W for the team. Like that's that a good model. As long as one of us win, we all win. Yeah. That's just when I have a group. And that was very smart. That y'all didn't go into it as a group, that y'all went into it separately. As yeah. That was very smart. That was a smart <laughs> play there. Because a we lot tactical. of people they go into it like now nah, we a group, we're gonna stay together, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. That's all fine and well and good. When we leave here, we still gonna be a group, right? Mm -hmm. But you never know. People might you know you never know the audience that you're performing for. People mm -hmm. might gravitate to LVM's music more than they gravitate to your music. Of course. So you know, going in separately is like that was a smart move. That was a smart move. The thing is, the thing is, people gotta realize when you're doing showcases, there's slots. So if a bunch of LVM members take over half the showcase. The, the the percentage is in our favor. We already got fifty percent. Like, come on, it's it's chess. We playing chess out here, man. Ain't nobody messing. Ah, with like four. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's listen. Somebody's been teaching you very well because we're definitely playing chess out here and not checkers. Absolutely. I Absolutely. It, it's research. I'm telling you, like, we one of the only artists that I know that legit took the time to really sit down and watch documentaries about hip hop. Like, we legit studied the game before we even really stepped into it. That's why, like, we climbing, we climbing faster than, you know, a lot of other artists. Like, and I think the thing, the difference between us is that we not, we not popping. Of course we know that. We, we underground. We still underground. 
But the thing is about us is that we make everlasting music. We definitely make everlasting music. And like we we continuous and we just we just I don't know. Like we not like everybody else. Like everybody else could put out one song and I right, that's your best song, cool. But after that it's like what else can you show? What else can you do? What else can you do? Like so for me like super smart. Yes. Yeah, shout out to the manager because she's dope. All right. He 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 I thought it was Shona. Nah. The manager is Shaq Bandito. That's the original bandit. Sha Shaquan. Shaquan, yeah. That's Shaq. Oh, this whole <laughs> time. I'm like, Shaquan. Yo! Nah. Yo, tell him I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this whole time, I'm really thick. And you know what? That's my whole stupid bad because he literally says that his name is Shaq and that he goes by Shaq. Yo, that's funny. <laughs> Not the I'm gun. Sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yo, that's my funny. bad. We're going to yeah. keep in touch. We're going to get all LVM on here. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Vibes, vibes. People like. He said dead. <laughs> I know. Listen. I need, I, I need something stronger than water in here. But anyway, let's get back to you. Tell us everything that you're about to drop. What's coming up for you in 2021? So that we leave out here on a good note. I want to hear all the good stuff. All right. So, boom. Bandit tape is definitely in the works. Me and regular Jay. We definitely working on a bandit project for me. And new visuals is coming out. Stressed out videos probably gonna drop by the end of this month. For those of you that don't know, Stressed Out is on my project. That's actually my favorite track on the project. Like I like the rap and stuff, but Lil Baby's probably one of my favorite artists. So like I like the I like the you know I the like Lil Baby vibes. too, actually. Yeah, I like the trap vibes. I like, you know, the pain. I like you feel me, actually speaking, like speaking mm -hmm. about my past and stuff, like so that the visuals are dropping for that. I got new music, new sound from LV Antonio. Like people can hear the rapping, but y'all gonna get something new. Like so the bandit tapes in the works. And if possible, if possible, if we could pull this off before the end of twenty twenty one, y'all gonna get an LVM project, gangster. Facts. Y'all can do it. Y'all can do it. Y'all gotten so far already in a yeah. short amount of time. You started in what, 2016, 2017? Uh we could say we we could say we dabbled in it, but really serious started, we could say twenty eighteen. Yeah, seriously, twenty eighteen. In a short amount of time you've been hurt, trust me. So <laughs> y'all can do an LVM project, just putting that thing in the work. The whole team is like, yo, we on it. Oh, oh yeah, there's a oh, show in July. Sure. Yeah, there's a show in July. We throwing a bandit bash. Yeah. Do I have to come in? Do I come in with yes. like a like a mask like this, like um, like a raccoon? Like, like a raccoon? You know what? You just gave me an idea. <laughs> you just gave me an idea, Gangsta. Definitely, definitely. But you should, you should pop out. You should pop out. You could probably get VIP. I'll pop out. All right. All you gotta do is send me the invite. Oh yeah. It's and right. it's in July. Yeah. That's my favorite month to pop yeah. out. That's yeah. my favorite. That is what I do the most popping out. I'm like, eh, it's summertime. I love the summertime. I love the summer. It's going to be a so movie. I'm gonna pop out. The winter, you might not see me too much, but the summer, I'm going to pop out. It's, it's going to be a movie. I promise you. When you come to the LVM show, not, this ain't even an LVM show. This is a whole the management show. Like, this is, you're going to see different types of artists. Like, we got, we got some. My whole team got some. I ain't going to lie. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love yeah. it. So thank you so much, Jen, for coming on tonight. Yeah, thank it you. Was, I'm not going it on. was jokes, even though I had the Rona. Uh huh. You see? <laughs> Boy, yo. You got people think, yo, I'm supposed to go on tour next week. You got people thinking I got the Rona. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's funny. But now, thank you. Oh, I, got, I, got, I got VIP? Yeah, of course. 
course. You a bandit. As soon as you did this interview, you signed your yeah, you signed your bandit name. Gangster. That's how oh, we move it. I'm gonna go get a mask right now. I swear. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the mask. I'm gonna take a picture, and I'm gonna be like, "Yo, I'm a bandit." <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Nobody can fuck with me. I'm good in the Bronx. I, oh, I yeah. was good in the Bronx before, but now like I'm real good in the Bronx. Right? Oh yeah, gangster, gangster. Anybody ever test you in the Bronx? Let me know. I'll get that situated, gangster. And I don't even gang bang. I don't even gang bang. I just let my nuts hang, gangster. Just let my nuts hang. <laughs> I'm not messing with you no more. Have a great night. I will you talk too. to you soon. Okay? Yes, ma'am. I'm coming to the Bandit Bash. Everybody up here is up next. Get at me. The manager, Shaq. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, it's the Stream Bandit Talk, everybody. Everybody that's watching, Stream Bandit Talk. Drop right. your social media and all of that. LVM Tonio, you're going to find me everywhere. LVM underscore Tonio on IG. LVM Tonio on YouTube. LVM Tonio on Facebook. Shit, if you want to find me on Facebook, you can. Gangster. For me. Gangster shit. Gang shit. <laughs> nah, I appreciate you, though. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You Live too. it up. Have fun. Thank you. Gang shit. That was dope. I'm, you guys are good over here and spill it. You guys are dope. I like you guys. Love versus money? Hmm. I'm going to ask myself the same question that I asked him. Am I doing it for the love or am I doing it? I'm definitely doing it for the love. Because even though you get paid to do something, you still do it for the love. I'm doing it for the love. Trust me. <laughs> I'm definitely doing it for the love. I love what I do. I literally wake up every day and check my schedule for what I have to do and make sure I get it done. Or at least make sure I contact people. And it, it's a process having your own brand and your own business. So if you don't really go into it for the love of it, you're not going to get any money out of it. It is what it is. Gang shit. I don't have the Rona. I spit. That's it. You know what? Good night, everyone. I'm about to eat my Oreo and watch LA Finest.